Hey everyone, this is Kelchips, and I've been hard at work this past week on my unnamed indie game. Imbued with brand new coding superpowers that I learned in the pressure cooker of the GMDK game jam, including best hits such as singletons, delegates, callbacks, and who could forget our favorite Unity editor attributes, I've created the most flexible, dynamic inventory system in the history of- uh, wait, no, that's the wrong clip. Wait, no, that's- oh crap. You know what? Just roll the intro. Alright, hey, just to capture you up to speed, my name is Kelchips and I am an indie game developer. This is the third devlog about my solo indie game project. It's drawing the best parts of a slice of life farming game and a monster hunting game into a single experience. In a nutshell, you vanquish monsters, build up your town, and in the process, become friends with the villagers and maybe even more. This week's goal was to get a working inventory system up, which is one of the final crucial elements of the monster hunting half of the game. This feature joins the flexible weapons and monster system, as well as the procedural level generation and handcrafted room layouts. With these things established, I think the dungeons are becoming more and more fleshed out each day. So, first things first. I started out by drawing the inventory and UI elements in a sprite, which I found is a good way of mapping out the UI without mucking things up with code. I'm by no means a professional UI designer, but I did borrow the technique of drawing the layouts out beforehand, which is a faster way to iterate and find a good design before actually spending the time to code any interactions. And I also drew up some quick items that I could use to test eventually, starting with an apple, because what RPG would be complete without a generic health restoring fruit? and then a kunai-inspired knife. Then I got started coding. There are going to be a bunch of different slot types in the final game, ones to display weapons, loot, and maybe later even armor and accessories. So I first defined some common properties, such as size, position, and storage for things like what item to display and what number to display. There's a slot info object, which stores what item to display and keeps track of how many there are, and then properties for that item are stored in a scriptable object that keeps track of what that item looks like, what its ID is, and what its max stack size is. Again, these are things that apply to every slot. But I hit this really odd problem where my scripts weren't being detected by the Unity editor, and I had a brief moment where I thought all of my project files had been corrupted, and I'd lost all of my code, but I found this quick fix online that thankfully saved my project. I do, however, use a GitHub repository to back everything up, so let this be a lesson to all game devs out there working on a game that's anywhere longer than a week or so to research version control. You don't know how important it is until it's too late, and I was so thankful during this whole scare that I knew in the back of my head that I at least had a backup version from about a week ago. Okay, with that scare out of the way, once the inventory was able to display items and toggle on and off, I developed a way to interact with the UI. Left and right clicking on a slot performs different functions on that slot's slot info object. Then, each time you click a slot, it updates its UI to match the new information that's stored in its slot info. This is a slightly more performance solution than just updating the UI each frame. Instead, I'm just updating it every time it's been clicked. But I'm not sure how much I'm actually saving here in terms of performance. I think I just did it to prove that I could, honestly. But the issue of optimization is probably one that I'm going to have to look into once I actually hit some performance issues. But that's an issue for later, right? Okay, first task was to code the left click, which I wanted to have the following behaviors. First, if the cursor is empty, clicking on a slot should pick up all of the items in that slot. Second, if the cursor is holding something, clicking on a slot with the same item should place as many items down as possible, up to a stack limit. Third, if the cursor is holding something, clicking on a slot with a different item should swap the items in the cursor in the slot. That took some time, but here's a little demo of that. And some of you have been asking to see my code, so I'm going to put that up on the screen for a little bit. It's probably not the best it could be written, so let me know if you have any pointers or anything. Then the right click. Right clicking should pick up one of the items in the slot. With the left click already coded, this wasn't too much extra work to do, but with the time spent debugging between shots, I think between each of these things there are like at least a couple of hours, these two mechanics took the better part of a whole day to code. I was running into this really weird bug where the slots wouldn't let me place items. Every time I tried it in the inspector, the window just closed and nothing changed. And since Unity didn't give me an error message or anything, I can't express how frustrating it was debugging this, but eventually I figured out that the script's loading error from earlier had caused it, and I just had to fix one file in my whole asset folder which wasn't being detected. Anyway, here's the code for that. Right now, nothing happens when you mouse over a slot, but I have plans to add some sort of description or tooltip that tells you what each item does. Sometime around here, I spent some time drawing a new cursor, which I think was long overdue, and it makes the game feel so much more professional. But while I was taking a closer look at that, I realized that the text on the UI elements was looking kind of distorted, and here's where things kind of hit a rut. Now, I'm sure a good number of you Unity developers in the audience are familiar with this, but UI elements in Unity operate on a different coordinate system than the game objects. This is because your game's eventually going to have to run on different resolution screens, so you can't guarantee the screen size. And now there's a pretty hacky quick fix for this in Unity, called the Scale with Screen Size setting. This just stretches the UI to fit within the screen. And it's not a huge issue if you don't have to support wildly different resolutions, like your game doesn't have to run on mobile. But since it's stretching the screen, it does end up distorting the UI sometimes, which is especially problematic for pixel art. This took me forever to figure out, but I had to switch the UI over from Scale with Screen Size to Constant Pixel Size, which was a pain, but now the UI is looking crisp, and I've learned quite a bit about UI, which has confused me for like the longest time, so at least that's out of the way. Anyway, then I implemented a hotbar. 
The idea here is that along with the two weapons, which always stay in the leftmost slots, you can scroll between the other items and use them with space or E. So alongside the two weapons, you're managing a hotbar full of consumables, which can heal you or unleash special abilities. And I don't know, something about seeing this in the game was so satisfying. I think the simple addition of a UI on top of the game made me realize that the game is actually coming along, which was nice after the frustration of fixing all the UI scaling. Alright, then I had to actually implement functionality to the items. So I extended upon the item class and added a generic use method, which performs different functions based on the item's category. So for example, a heal item has a field that takes a number, and when it's used it heals you by that amount. And a spawn item has a field that takes an object, and when it's used it creates that object at your location. So if that object is, say, a bomb, it'll unleash a bomb when it's used. I also coded my own custom editor for all this, so the item scriptable object now shows different fields based on what that category is. So if you indicate that an item is a heal object, it automatically prompts you to put a number in for the heal value, and if you indicate that it is a spawn object, it automatically prompts you to fill in the object. Now this isn't super necessary, but it does make making objects a lot faster. So what are the items you ask? Good question. So first we have a knife. The idea for the knife was that it would be a single-use sort of lightweight offense item so you could carry lots of them and weave them between attacks. So I wanted them to have a homing effect, so you wouldn't have to think too much about aiming them. Long-term fans of the channel will remember how iconically difficult it was for me to write this homing pattern from way back in my first video, and somehow I still don't have a good grasp on how to write it. First I made a collider that scans the area in front of the projectile, looking for enemies to home in on, but I forgot to make it a trigger, so projectiles actually looked like this for a while. But a lot of code later, and a short break to draw the knife projectile, the knife finally worked. At first, for debugging purposes, I had it attached to the bow. And I think this is actually pretty cool and could become a weapon, like some kind of weapon that shoots out the knives. But then I attach it to the item like it was intended, so it creates a knife at your location when you use it. Then I added the first healing item, which is an apple, and then I drew hearts and created a particle effect for when you use it. Right now the player does have an internal HP value, but there isn't any UI for it, but I promise that the apple really is healing the player. Anyway, with this item system and flexible inventory slot implemented, I think the inventory is in a good place. I do worry that using items in the inventory too quickly, like spamming multiple knives, isn't really fun and is kind of awkward to click on a keyboard, so I may make the items more powerful, but more rare so you don't have to spam them too often. But that's the things that I've added in the past week. I really want to get started on the town part of the game soon, especially after figuring out dialogue in the GMTK game jam, so that may be what I'll work on next. And it'll be nice to finally get out of these dungeons after so long. Anyway, I keep saying this, but again, thank you all for the support for this channel and for the game. You probably saw this, but recently we unlocked the community tab, and I've been posting on it semi-regularly, but I'm trying not to spam. One of the most recent things I've done is actually respond to every comment on the channel. I wanted to take some time to just express my gratitude for this community, and return some of the energy that you guys have shown me. That's all for now. Keep an eye out for some NPCs and cool town stuff in the next devlog, but uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks y'all.